In this episode, the newest racetrack coming to the Tampa area. The new most common supercar around us. And safety ratings. Welcome to episode 199 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell, uh, I hear rumor has it that there might be a new racetrack coming near us. Yes! I'm very excited for this. It's not a very big track, but it's a track nonetheless. And what track is this? It's a like a private track up in Tampa, which is only about an hour or so from us, maybe even a little less than that. Uh, it's at something called the Motor Enclave, which is like garage condos. I've heard of that before. Yeah, so garage condos are a thing that are popping up all over the place now. You've probably seen signs like, or reserve yours a day day or whatever the case it is. I love the idea of a garage condo if you're someone that's done well in life and have a few cars, right? It's like your own personal man cave garage exotic car storage thing. It works for us really well. Yeah, like... You, a lot of them have like their own little like kitchenette, couch, a bar, coffee machine, like stuff that you want in a bar, ba- like in a garage, right? Bar kind of stuff, yep. right? It's really cool. But the Motor Enclave in Tampa, not only are they garage condos, it's a track. Hmm. It's actually supposed to be a really, really cool track. And we have a quick little like uh, render of it here. It's a Tilkey designed circuit which is a racetrack designer. Look at the track at the bottom of it. How yeah. cool is that? It does look like a fun little track. It looks like it would be a blast. Got a couple straightaways. Got mm-hmm. some curvy bits. You got some high speed turns. You got some low speed turns. It's a variety. Yeah, it's got everything. But even better yet, there's a little box in kind of orangish brown by the track. Do you see what that says? What does that say? Vehicle dynamics pad. Ooh. It's got a skin pad. Yep. And then if you actually look on the top part of this little map, like amusement park map, you have, what is that? Some rally experience. Jeez. Oh, an 80-acre off-road experience. Rubicon trail experience, rally cross experience, and desert experience. A variety pack. What? All in one place. This is like the car guy's amusement park, and it's only an hour away from us. That's pretty cool. Oh, my God. This is amazing. That is super cool. We I'm need to go drive this. I'm so gl- I really hope they do give like open lapping days or public lapping days something because I will absolutely be taking some laps of this. Mm-hmm. This looks like an absolute freaking ball of a place. No, it'd be super cool. It super, looks super like cool. so much fun. You've got, like you said, those sweepers. You've got low speed turns, high speed turns. You've got everything. This thing looks like a freaking blast. I'm totally down. And I hope that they do allow... Uh, rental usage of the skid pad, too. That'd be fantastic. True. Right? Yeah. That'd be cool. But yeah, Motor Enclave. They've got a track coming to us, and I really want to drive it. And if you're from the Motor Enclave and you're listening or watching, hit us up. We would be so interested in coming out and uh, doing a quick review of it or whatever the case might be. Heck yeah. Yeah. So super, super excited for this to happen. Um, But let's move on to some car spotting. Let's do it, buddy. Have you seen anything? I have seen some of the craziest things I've ever seen. Okay. And I've seen a lot of crazy things. I've seen Paganis and Bugattis and all sorts of things. Zondas, yeah, everything. And you name it, right? But this past weekend, I have seen one car that I've never seen in my whole life that's one of my ultimate dream cars that have ever been created. But also, I've seen a very rare Lamborghini. Okay. Saw so the Lamborghini Aventador Ultime Roadster. Huh. One of only 250 worldwide. How do you see these on a weekly basis? I saw this car twice in two days. How? Just casually cruising around downtown Sarasota. Jeez. And it's glorious. That's crazy. It's glorious. That looks amazing. It is fantastic. I saw it cruising downtown. And I am just unbelievable view of this thing. One of 250 is just stupid rare. Yeah, just casually cruising down around. Super cool. Yeah, unbelievable. What else did you see? But what I saw, uh, my spot of the week, and if you're scrolling down, you'll see a photo gallery towards the bottom. But 
what I saw is one of my ultimate dream cars. It's a Porsche. Mm -hmm. It's not a regular Porsche, though. It would be a Singer Porsche. Now, they're, to my knowledge, a company that takes a Porsche. You give them a Porsche 911, a Porsche whatever they're going to modify, mm -hmm. and they modify it to tasteful delight of a Porsche enthusiast. Mm -hmm. um, but do they badge it as sing? How did you know it was a singer? So singers very to the well-trained eye. Singer has a very different look about it. I know to most people, it's just a 911. They're looking to go, wow, nice 911. Right. But to the trained eye, there are some key things that stick out. Headlights, grill design, stance, wheels, tail light design, center exit exhaust, small ducktail, the little badge that says Singer above okay. Porsche. They do have a badge. They do have a badge, but it's not a big one. Right. right? They have a little four liter badging. I could see the small Singer badge as it was driving the other direction because as soon as I saw it, my head was turning a full 360 degree like a, an owl all right um i was we were passing it going the other direction and as soon as i saw it from across the road i was like oh 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 what what, what is this what is this because as soon as i saw the front grills i was like that's not a regular 911 there's something different about it now i don't know for sure but i think it was this exact spec the octagon commission huh i believe the Octom octagon commission came out of arizona so it's not unheard of that an Arizonan may ship their cars here. No, not at all. Right? Because it was like that bluey gray. I'm 99% sure it was that exact car that I saw. Yeah, this is right up your alley. Oh, my God. I yep. have never seen a singer before, and I was nerding out. Holy cow. I've never seen one either. But to my knowledge, like I said, they're just super tastefully designed to the ultimate Porsche mod, you would say? It is the 911 perfected. Yeah, like, that's a good way to put it. It's taken all of the quirks that are not perfect of the 911 and made every little piece of it an 11 of 10 in perfection. Every single detail is crafted to ultimate perfection. It's sound, it's stance, it's feel, I'm sure. I wish I could drive one. It, everything about it, I mean, they've got so much engineering that's gone into this. It's perfect. They're not cheap. A half a million up. Easy. No, minimum. <laughs> On the used market, it's a million dollars. Oh, God. Okay, they're very not cheap. They're very not cheap. This is the price of that Aventador Ultima plus, plus, plus. I... Oh. I cannot justify that. I, I know it's 911 perfection, but dude, you could buy four brand new GT3 RSs. I could justify it. How? Four of them. For me, though, this is a car that I could keep forever and never get tired of. It doesn't have the tech that no. the GT3 RS has. That I would probably think this is really cool, but I don't. It's just the ultimate car in my eyes. It's the car that you can do everything with that fits perfect in any scenario, run it through. You wanna take it on the track? Perfect. It'll handle it beautifully. You wanna take it to a very classy gala, gala, right? Yep. You'll show up perfectly in your black tie suit. You want to just blend into traffic. It doesn't have a giant wing on the back that says, look at me, I'm a race car. It, it's the ultimate car for me. I get that. Like I, for me, that is, that and a Carrera GT are kind of the best cars in my eyes that have ever been made. I just can't justify the money for that. That's it. That's insane money for what is already a like 95% to perfection car to get that extra 5% is like, uh, just throw three more cars worth of money at it. It's just so, I good. don't know. I, I, I could do it. I could see it. I could see it. Okay. I Any could car. see it. 
but my spot of the week singer porsche by a mile i've I just you've never seen one oh that does things to me <laughs> <laughs> need some time alone with this picture all right so that's my spot of the week did you happen to see anything I did happen to see something. So, uh, as I was out and about, actually, on Saturday, I saw almost everything. (laughs) Uh, You name it, I saw it. Bentleys, no problem. Ferraris, no problem. Like, three or multiple of them. 488s, (laughs) 458s, no problem. I was around our local mall, our fancy mall, and then I went down and had a nice walk near the beach. You go to any two of those places let alone both of them on the same day, you're oh, yes. guaranteed to see a bazillion sports cars, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, McLarens, Aston Martins, Bentleys, whatever it is. Yeah. And they were all out in force. Mm-hmm. Specifically, the McLaren crowd was out in force. Oh, were they? I saw three uh, <laughs> McLaren 720Ss. And yeah, all different colors, a couple, I think, different specs i don't think there were any long tails i think one was a crop top like we see here uh, which was a spider uh and then the other two were not so there was the uh the orange the blue that we're looking at here and then a matte black which i don't think is stock the matte was obviously either a wrap or a paint is sarasota now like the car spotting capital of the world at this point the world no the southeast u.s certainly well miami uh, but I mean, for non-huge cities, let's call it that. Yeah, definitely. Like, of the I, non-major cities, I think Sarasota ranks top three in car spotting. Mm-hmm. Because in a casual day, like you said, you can see Ferrari, Aston, McLaren, Lamborghini, Bentley, Porsche. Yeah, Name your brand. I saw a Noble. I think I saw a, uh, a 911 Turbo S. Yeah, I'm sure but you probably saw th- two of them. At but. that point, I was like, I had already seen a Ferrari and three McLarens, and I was like, I mean, it's just a 911. It's, yeah. it's a fancy one. It's a fast one, but it's just not a 911. Yeah. So I, I don't know. It's wild what you can see out here. Uh, a couple of other notables that I happened to see. There was an MG, which is kind of cool, the really small British yeah. sports car. Yeah. Saw those driving around. Uh, and then I saw also a white Rolls-Royce Phantom, Ooh. which was pretty fancy as well. Side question. Is the McLaren 720S now becoming like the most common supercar around? As of my past weekend, yeah, it I think was it's becoming. It, it might be edging out the R8 for the most common supercar that we see. There's nowadays. a pretty big McLaren dealership in downtown Sarasota, so I think. I I mean, it's one of the most common supercars we see here. It I see an orange one like almost every second day. There's one in downtown Sarasota that parks outside. Yeah, like it's 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 just like winter beater. It's not a garaged car. It's it, a McLaren. This is my going to the shops and back car. What the heck, man? This is the car I put my dog in. <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> like, and it's a crazy sports car. It'll do 0 to 60, 2.8 seconds. Top speed, 212. Horsepower, 710. Uh, pound feet of torque, 568. Almost 600. I mean, curb weight, 3,300 pounds. It comes with a you know, dual clutch, 7 speed. Shifts like nobody's business. It's ridiculous. And it's common it's, traffic now. It's like a, it's like probably in your town, what would be a, a Mercedes? Yeah. It's like that common now. It's becoming that, yeah. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Or a BMW. It's crazy. Yeah. So, good spotting. Uh, let's move on to the I wish they would have. Do you happen to have an I wish they would have? I do. So, you know I have a 3D printer. And you know yeah, I you like do. to yeah. 3D print things. Um I recently 3D printed uh, some vacuum nozzles. So, oh. you know, the little things you put on the vacuum to be able to reach in between crevices and whatnot. Yeah. And I have a specific one that's like a very long, narrow, pointy one that yeah. has a really small hole at the end of it. Um, and that is very useful for getting like the crevices in the seat, mm. you know, in the bolsters of the seat. Yeah. You can get all the dust and sand and stuff that gets in there that you can never get out with a normal vacuum. Yeah. So you can get all the way down in there and get all that out. But while I was doing that, I was thinking, why don't manufacturers, when you buy a car, especially something as fancy as like a McLaren and the, or BMWs and Mercedes, why don't they give you a set of tools that are specifically designed for cleaning your car? Ooh, that's good idea. Yeah. Like specific leather cleaner. That? Specific 
hose nozzle that can reach perfectly under that seat. Right. Those areas in the car that they know that they have between the seats, like something that would slide down in there. Some just goodies that would help you clean the car. They just left in the glove box for you. Sure. Or that, put them in a, a nice little bag and you get the bag when you walk out of the dealership. Something like that. That is a great idea. It's It wouldn't be very hard to do. Now, I know that some companies, I think Tesla gives you some stuff. I know that some companies do. But generally, they're like very high-end companies. And they don't really give you the best instructions on how to use them either. So. <laughs> Figure it out. It seems like this could be done in a better way than it is. I do like where you're going with that one. That yeah. does make some practical sense. Yes. So, do you have, and I wish they would have. Um, I do. <laughs> My wish they would have are usually a little ridiculous. And this one is no different. So, as I've been driving around, the idiocy of drivers that I see on the road nowadays has reached an all-time high. Is it getting worse? Oh, my God, by the second. Ugh. I had a car. So, I was in the right lane. I had a car in two lanes to my left, the far left lane. We we're going past a highway on-ramp. Their GPS must have told them, take oh, the no. next right. Oh, no. To get on I-75 southbound. No. And they went full three lane sweep, causing every single lane to go damn near full ABS. Yep. And I mean, standing on that brake pedal and go, oh my God, I'm going to miss my turn right now. And they went screaming across, causing almost a huge accident right in front of me with me and went on. So I wish. The drivers had like a skill rating that would populate on their back window to let you know just how much of a goddamn idiot is behind that car. <laughs> oh, no. Like how many near misses has this driver had? And it just like pops up, bing, negative 827. You want an I rating. I do. You want an I rating in real life. I, I do because I need to know what this idiot is thinking. All right, let me educate some people here. So iRacing is a game <laughs> that I play. You will jump on sometimes and run some practice laps. It's a racing game. Uh, there are two different ratings in that game. There is your safety rating, which is how <laughs> safe of a driver you are. I think that that's the rating we should probably have in real life. Yeah, that is fine. And then you have an I rating, which the game is called I Racing, so they called it I rating. Uh, but that is just relative to how well you finish the race relative to the competition to you. So I don't want an I rating. I want a safety rating. Right. You want a safety rating because I yes. rating is how fast you are and I safety rating is like how safe you are. The ultimate drivers safe. would always have the best I rating, but they Gen would have the worst safety rating. In theory, they don't correlate, but in practice, they kind of correlate. Hopefully. Because <laughs> the unsafe drivers tend to not finish the race, yeah. which means you drop your I rating. Yeah. Yes. You want to project the safety rate. I do. Of drivers around you. <laughs> Maybe it's like a hologram above their car as they're driving or in the back <laughs> window, something, so that I have more of a warning of what a colossal jackass is driving that car. You know, I'll definitely note down when I get in a race, like, oh, they're pretty bad. I remember that name. Give them a little more, little more room when I'm passing them. I'm not going to dive too deep on the inside of them nope. because they will have no idea that I'm here. Nope. Give them a couple more flashes, a little more room, you know. I'm down. <laughs> it would cause some interesting situations. <laughs> I know ours would be good, but man, the people who would not like it are the ones that have the bad ones. The ultimate drivers. Yes. The, the, yes. <laughs> It'd be funny. It'd be funny. Uh, so that's my I wish you would have. I wish you had a safety rating that populated somewhere projected from the back of your car while I was behind you. There's so no I could way. Know. There's no way, and that's some big brother stuff that I don't want to get into at all. But uh, interesting thought. You see my point. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to uh, wrap us up for episode 199. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please do do us a couple favors here. Hit the subscribe, right? We'd love to have you. Drop a thumbs up and a comment on this video. Let us know what you think about having a safety rating projected on the back of your car. And if you're listening on audio only, send us those thoughts via social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto underscore. YouTube is We Are Auto. And our website 
is weareauto.io, where you can go to catch some of your favorite past races. So thanks again. Catch you guys in the next one. Peace.